Uh, all right, uh, here we are back again with the great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, <clears throat> when last we left off, uh, we had we, we did a bit of a dance with our pal Herlock and figured out some interesting things about our uh, the person in front of us, who was in fact Nicolina, the famed ballerina. Now, uh, it's time to actually talk to her and see what she knows about, uh, anything. But first, let's see if there's, any, if there's anything we can present. Let me show the badge. Or sorry, our, uh, university student pin. But it also looks suspiciously like the logo, or one of the logos, uh, for Ace Attorney. Which is weird. <clears throat> um... Can I show you this? I'm actually a university student from the Empire of Japan, you see. Let's see if I can do a better voice. Or I don't know. You know, the stereotypically feminine voice isn't that uh, interesting, you know. Uh, that means nothing to me. No, why would it? Mr. Narihodo, if you're determined to flaunt your you my badge, at least choose a Japanese person who might recognize it. I mean, yeah, showing random uh, pins f to people from other countries, you know, they're probably not going to know what to make of that, so... Yeah. Mrs. Otto, can I show you this? Yeah, just fucking flaunt your badge at anyone who sees. Much like your uh, descendant. Maybe later. Ooh, I could show Inspector Hosunaga, too. Anyway, let's see what she knows about what happened last night. Did you know that someone was killed in the cabin next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen told me this morning when I was eating breakfast. The man who died. He was a friend of mine. Uh, oh. That's why we're trying to find out what happened. Did you, uh, notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps you heard a strange noise, for example. Perhaps people talking? <clears throat> oh, geez, this guy's voice. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps the ship was absorbed in a wild tempest. Perhaps its steam engine exploded. Perhaps everyone on board would have noticed if that had happened. Miss, Miss Pelo Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? I don't know. I'm sorry, but all I could think about last night was what I had done and whether they would find me. Oh yeah, because she took the tiara and, you know, ran away from home and it's just a 15-year-old girl. It's kind of, it's kind of a, a, seems like she's in kind of a tough situation. I didn't notice anything that was happening around me. Oh, I see. Eh, well, that's not useful. Uh, let's see about this. You've run away from your ballet company, haven't you? The Novovich Ballet? Yes. I am traveling to Great Britain. And from there, I want to go to America. I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet. I will start a new life. <clears throat> you wish to forget? A challenging proposition when you have that striking tiara as a reminder. But the tiara is mine. I need it to live. I mean, is it really that important? I mean, I know it's worth a lot, but, you know. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, that's fair. I have no money of my own. The Novovich Ballet gives us only a little food and water, and we must dance all over the world. Oof. That's, a. Uh, Seems a little bit like slavery? That seems kind of uncool. I had to run away. I had no choice. If I stayed, it would have killed me. I mean, that's fair. So you ran away to protect yourself? Yes. And the crew of this ship, they have all been kind to me. They let me come on board, and they said I could hide in this cabin. 
Hmm. If that is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova, it creates a most intriguing conundrum. Yeah, man, my hairlock voice is never going to be super good or consistent. You'll have to forgive me. Yes, it does. What do you think about it, Mr. Narhodo? Me? Oh, uh, well, yeah, of course. I think we should hear Miss Pavlova's explanation. To what conundrum? I'm not sure, but... I'm not sure what that... Yeah, I'm not sure what they're getting at with that. Let's see. <clears throat> Miss Pavlova, allow me to pose you a riddle. <laughs> According to this newspaper, it was only yesterday that you absconded from the ballet. Now, that being the case, it must have been last night that you boarded this vessel. Well, yeah, presumably. However, the SS Biora stopped by no port last night. Ah, that's it. Of course. So how is it, pray, that you come to be aboard? Hmm, good question. Now that I think about it, the crewmen outside the cabin acted very strangely when we mentioned that. It was just after we asked him about it when the occupant of this cabin came aboard. Oh yeah, Biff Stroganov. That is not your business. Yes, you're right. He did seem to be hiding something. Uh, an angel. Oh, sorry, wrong voice. An angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the stage. Th sorry, what was that? It is how the Russian newspapers described one of my performances. And that is how I came here, too. I descended from the heavens, because I am an angel. I, I mean, uh, that, that's a bit weird to just say. Considering English isn't your native, your mother tongue, your description is very vivid. Mr. Sholmes once said, I never can resist a touch of the dramatic. It seems Miss Pavlova is the same. Mm, a genius descended from the head. Oh, sorry. A genius descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to detection. What's one said about myself? <laughs> a quote from a wonderfully extravagant advertisement for the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, in fact. Huh. Yes, yes, Mr. Showy. Anyway, it doesn't look like Miss Pavlova is going to tell us what really happened. Yeah, that's pretty vague. But I'm guessing maybe, uh, she used her feminine charms? Is that what she's implying? So, the friend you mentioned is inside your traveling case, is that right? Mm. I don't think that animals are allowed on board, according to the rules of passage. Oh, please! Don't tell! Don't tell any of the crew! If they found my precious... Mm -hmm. Then the barely Russians would have stirred themselves in unison to throw you and your case overboard, no doubt. Ah! Yeah, that was not very, uh, assuaging to her nerves. So reassuring, Mr. Sholmes. But what sort of pet is your friend? Uh, a little puppy? <laughs> it is, isn't it? Oh, I guess not. Maybe an adorable little rabbit. You never know. Oh, I guess not. Ha! You credit Russia as a land with small rabbits, do you? Oh! Don't they have don't they have small rabbits there then? You may well ask. I have no idea. Why the fuck did you bring it up then? Like you fucking knew, man. Like come on, like you knew for like I was just pulling shit out my ass. <sighs> You two are the miserable bunglers when it comes to understanding the nature of young ballerina's friends. Isn't it obvious? It must be a chicken. Where did you come to that conclusion, my friend? 
my tall f goggles wearing friend. Really? Consider the benefits. A rousing wake up call, daily fresh eggs, and when adversity strikes, it could satisfy the needs of sustenance. I mean, you could say that about any pet, really. That's not exclusive to chickens. I mean, chick I mean not all really eggs, but the that last part, you know. So you'd eat your friends. I'll remember that, you little shit. I don't guess it's not a chicken. Shock of shocks. Well, it would appear this friend's identity is a closely guarded secret, not to be revealed. <laughs> I don't really see what the joke was there, but okay. She obviously doesn't quite trust us yet. I mean, I kind of get that. Herlock's not exactly the a guy you just want to tell all your secrets to right away. I mean, look at him, man. There's something I should like to show her, I think. Maybe she might be able to shed some light on it. Okay, well, uh, I guess we do have to present so something else to her. Probably not that. Probably not that. Maybe this? I mean, it's the article that she, that's about her. Miss Pavlava, about this article. You look so beautiful, like a fairy. Yeah, that's fair. I'm scared. If my picture is in the newspapers. You poor girl. She's so young, just 15 years old. For her to have run away all by herself, she must have felt very, very alone. Yeah, she did, she did mention that she didn't have any family or friends or loved ones or anyone. Kind of sucks for her. Maybe they, maybe she knows this. Maybe she knows this uh, Bolshevik guy. Miss Pavlova, about this article. Did you know about this merciless revolutionary already? No. But when I saw the picture, I couldn't believe it. He looks just like me in my disguise. Ah, so that was just a coincidence. You weren't specific specifically trying to mimic him. Huh? Am I the only one around here with eyes? The other man. The one wearing the brown. He also said so. He said we look the same. Yeah, he says a lot of things, but uh, I have a strong feeling that besides you and the great detective, you won't find another soul in this ocean who thinks there's any similarity there at all. I mean, there's, it's not like, they look vaguely different, but like, they both have beards and wear hats and look bushy and shit. Like, if you didn't, Again, if you only were going by a physical description of both people, you could reasonably confuse them, I would think. Mr. Narahodo, I won't allow you to speak ill of Mr. Sholmes. No, no, I, I wouldn't dream of it. He's he's super cool. Okay, so I guess that wasn't the important thing. Hey, you want to see a dead body? Miss Pavlova, would you take a look at this? I don't know. I don't know anything. Mr. Narahodo, you're frightening the poor girl. Oh, uh, sorry. I wasn't trying to. Okay, I guess she didn't want to see a dead body. Okay, maybe the diary. Maybe she knows about the speckled band. This is a diary of my friend who passed away. His diary. Yes. Uh, yes. And he wrote in it last night before he died. Something a little unusual. It reads... 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling babe sound. Whistle baby, whistle baby. Won't you blow my whistle baby, whistle baby. Were you, is, that what, is that what you were doing, Miss Pavlova? Were, were you listening to Flow Rider last night? And then a few minutes later, 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? I don't understand. It's strange, isn't it? But the ventilator he mentions joins this cabin, you see. Yeah, that'd do. That's kind of what we were, uh... That's why we came to the zoo in the first place. 
It's up there on the wall. In other words, this cabin and the victim's cabin are connected together. Oh! Miss Pavlova, has, uh, has something occurred to you? Does the speckled, the speckled band the victim mentioned mean something to you? Or the whistling sound, perhaps? No, I, I don't know anything. Oh. Well, that wasn't overly productive. Knock, knock, bitches. It's, I don't know who, who is it exactly. Oh, uh, it's you. Excuse me, Mr. Roylott. Oh, damn, look at Mr. fucking Quick Change, or Miss Quick Change over here. Fucking t uh, disguised in a blink of an eye. Yes, what? Wow, she's fast. Captain would like to speak with you. You must come to Captain's Quarter at once, please. All right. I will come now. What? You must leave. Now. Oh, oh no, it's fine. <laughs> Don't mind us. I mean, come on. We're basically besties at this point, right? You know? What's mine is yours. What's yours is mine. I have free reign to investigate the cabin now. I can, I can look inside your travel case while you're talking to the, the captain. I mean... That's what a bestie would do, you know? Yes, please don't worry yourself, Mr. Roydot. Get out! Okay, well damn. Uh, you didn't need to tell me what your favorite film by Jordan Peele is. The pass- oh, fucking Christ. The passenger said out, or you want me to throw you out? Ugh. Looks like we'll have to leave investigating this thing happen until later. Ugh. Personally, I'm more of an us man, if I'm, if I'm being quite honest with you. What a pity. Oh boy, that wasn't overly useful. I mean, we, we know that she's the ballerina is here, but we didn't really get a chance to investigate anything, so. Seems like a bit of a bit missed opportunity on our part. Fucking Biff Stroganoff. <laughs> Having still not managed to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin, we were unceremoniously chased out. That is to say, we were quite literally picked up and thrown into the passageway outside. Damn, talk about an unceremonious, unceremonious uh, departure. Oh, hey, we're gonna, we got to be continued. Yeah, go ahead and hit him with a big fat save. Curious where things will be going from here, because Kind of seems like we lost our lead, you know? Nine of January, SS Piara, first cloud yeah, first class cabin passageway. I wish we had been thrown out like that. Well, maybe you know what it's like now, says Otto, to be fucking thrown around so unceremoniously. You and your sus Otto takedowns. I wish we managed to find some clue as to what that speckled bed might be. Well, you know, not to be, uh, guessing stuff too far ahead, but given what we saw in the, like, opening little animation that I presumably was quoting like one of the books. Uh, I have an impression that the speckled band might in fact be a little snaky guy 
if you know what I mean, because, uh, well, there was a snake in the, in the beginning. Plus, Pavlova had mentioned having a pet inside her case that she didn't want us to see, and it was, like, moving and stuff, so... Don't think it takes too much uh, guesswork. I mean, I don't think it's that much of a guess to say those two things might be related, you know? Then again, again who describes a, a snake in that way anyway? Like, if I saw a snake, I wouldn't be like, huh, it reminds me of a speckled bat. Unless, you know, it was dark and I, and I only saw, like, the faint outline, I guess. But Anyway. We didn't manage, we didn't manage to investigate at all. We didn't find jack shit in it, Mr. Naruhodo. What the fuck are we going to do, Naruhodo-sama? And I imagine... That we won't be able to for a while longer. We'll never get past that sailor guarding the door. Hmm. He's clearly glaring at us as if to say, don't even think about it. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? Well, what happened to our great detective friend? Where did he go? Did he get thrown out? Is he, like, hiding in the cabin somewhere? Is he just gonna fucking, like, jump scare us again like he's done before? Oh, yes! He's completely disappeared! When did he do that? I mean, and... He slipped away as quiet quietly as the wind. But not before ensuring that these were securely back on my wrists. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, we already examined stuff, I think, right? Like, we... Remember we examined the scenery of this cabin? No, no. So we just move over. Maybe I can check this door. Now that he's guarding the other door. That door leads to the second class area. Hmm. It's locked. I can't open it. Uh, no, well, that stands to reason. No one wants to let the murderer escape. Gosh, she gave me a very stern look when she said that. Come on, Cesaro, I thought we fucking, you know, I, I show, I've shown that I'm a, a trustworthy fella. Hmm. Okay, well, that wasn't very fruitful. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I investigated, uh, or yeah, like I said, I examined most of the important stuff. But let's re-examine. A mousetrap. Hey, what about the door? Maybe I can go back to my house. Or my, my cabin, rather. First class cabin number one. Yeah, that's that's our cabin, all right. Not our cabin, comrade. It's, uh, yeah, okay. Well, no, I, saw, we saw, I think we've seen this, haven't we? Yeah, I feel like we read this dialogue. Or I feel like I read this dialogue before. Oh, maybe this is something different, because... Hey, Hosanaga should still be in there, right? Maybe we should check in with him. Yes, we should probably find him and ask. Okay, well. I feel like Biff is not going to want to chat with us, so... Yeah. I like, that's a nice little uh, way of doing the transitions, you know. Let's see what our boy Hosanaga uh, turned up, if anything. It looks like they're still investigating in here. Yes, on that subject. I wonder if Inspector Hosanaga is unscathed. What do you mean, unscathed? Surely you haven't forgotten, have you, Narahodo-san? The dude is constantly coughing up blood. It's it's kind of weird. Oh, that you meant like that. Don't you remember what he said about allowing you out of this cabin to investigate? Yeah, he was kind of doing us a solid. He was going to talk to the captain about it. He said he'd lay his life on the line for you. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that was pretty cool. 
But I'm sure he was exaggerating. Let's see what he has to say for himself. He might have some new information for us. If you ever know. Well, where is he? I don't fucking... S oh. Jeez, I swear. Like, you just like turn your head 20 degrees to the left and suddenly see, see stuff again. Uh, is there anything I can... I guess, again, I don't... Bleh. I feel like I examined this area before. But I don't want to see if there's anything mm, new, perhaps. Yeah, why not these books? All the books provided for passengers are cop occupying this cabin, neatly arranged on the shelf. They were all over the place when we first looked around, if you remember. Yeah, we basically manipulated the crime scene, but apparently the Japanese investigative uh, Japanese investigations aren't really concerned about that in this point in this point in time, according to the first case. You know, it's not a thing. Oh yes, and you tidied them up, didn't you? You have to look after the ship's property. Unruly behavior in the cabins leads to damage. I mean, yeah, that's fair, I guess. But it really wasn't me who knocked him over. Well, well, anyway, I feel much better now that they're neatly lined up. I can't relax when things are untidy. Well, uh, you better fucking tidy up the rest of this shit, because, well, it's not exactly what I would call tidy, you know? Let's see. Check out the desk, since I think her uh, her lock is off. Off of it, you know. This is where Kazuma spent his final moments, writing his diary. 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. Yeah, yeah. 1.35. It looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Then again, do they have snakes in... Do they... I don't know. I don't know. Were snakes like a cop? No. Obviously, it's snakes in Japan. Like, they're not a fucking uh, New World exclusive species. Looking at his writing here on this page, it's almost impossible to believe that he's gone. I know, man. It kind of sucks. Kazuma-sama left us a valuable clue in these words. I'm sure of it. We have to solve this mystery, Narahodo-san. We will. Yeah, we're gonna do this. For our sake and Kazuma. But mostly my sake, because I don't want to go to jail, you know? It's spooky. Anyway, not enough fucking around. Uh, Hosanaga, what do you got for me, pal? Oh! Bugger! Pal! You look even worse for wear than you did before when you were coughing up blood. Ah, you're back. I Inspector! What happened to you? Your face is... Please, don't worry about it. They're just scratches. Made by a bear, maybe? Holy fuck, dude. Are you, are you okay? Oof. When I told the captain that I'd given you permission to investigate, he told me he'd pummel me with his fists and then toss me overboard. What? Dude, I want to meet this captain guy. Like, holy shit. Everyone keeps talking about the captain, but I haven't seen the captain. I wonder who the captain is, you know? But the pummeling was over in a flash, and he must have decided against throwing me overboard. So it was nothing, really. It looks like he wasn't joking when he said he'd lay his life on the line if he had to. Yeah, you're no kidding. I mean... I mean, I appreciate it, Hosananga, but don't go get yourself fucking beat up on our account. Well, thanks to your thanks, thanks to your efforts, we now know a little about the neighboring cabin. Yes, so I understand. Oh! I bumped into a man claiming to be a great detective a little while ago. I think his name was something like Herlock Scholz. I don't think he was German, though. Ah, that explains it. 
Shall we compare notes, then? We can tell you what we found out. Yes, let's do it. Oof, man. I kind of feel bad for you, my guy. Like, jeez. We should, like, buy you a drink or something. Just to, like, hang, to, 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 you know, to make up for our, all the trouble you put us in. Or not all the trouble that we've caused you, I mean. You haven't, you haven't really ca caused us any trouble. What? Nikolina Pavlova. She's in the cabin next door. Oh, uh, do you know who she is? Please! What self-respecting ballet fed would know that graceful angel? Man, I like, I do like kind of doing the shift between him when he's all like calm and, you know, all calm and collected. And then he's like, oh yeah, I'm kind of fucking passionate about some shit. And like, nice contrast. <laughs> I'm dying. Damn. Uh, oops. I think I upset him there. Maybe he just has a weak constitution, you know? Well, uh, that tells us the neighboring cabin is unrelated to this to the case, at least. Oh? Uh, but how's that? Because angels don't go around committing crimes, do they? <laughs> <coughs> Dying sounds. You know how it is. Yeah, you know, you just, you're fangirling or fanboying over a, a acclaimed ballerina and then you just fucking cop up a lung, you know? It, it happens to the best of us. Inspector, has your investigation in here proved fruitful? If I'm honest, uh, there's very little more I can do. Our duty is to make sure the scene isn't disturbed, ready to hand over to the Hong Kong police. So I'm just keeping watch here, trying not to take my eyes off the job. Oh, I see. Ah, there is one thing. I do have a small piece of new information for you. Oh, what? I mean, dude, like, I'm kind of in desperate need for, like, any kind of new leads. So, anything you got, I'll appreciate it. Yes, do tell us, Inspector. Please. Yeah, well, fucking lay it on us, you know? What is this new information you have, Inspector? It's this. The BRR's medical officer has finished his examination of the body. I managed to obtain the report. Oh, Kazuma's postmortem report. Kazuma-sama. So, what was the cause of death? Damage to the cervical vertebrae is what's written in the report. Damage to the cervical vertebrae. So what, like someone broke his back? His, oh, his neck. Yeah, that makes more sense. Like, yeah, it's obviously he has. Okay. His neck was broken. Yes, it would seem so. There were no obvious wounds or other signs of injury. So at first, I think they were considering poison. But, you know, they wouldn't have a, to have a case be poison related, you know, one right after the other. That would be very stock and uh, very cliche. And, you know, we're not about that here in uh, Japan or on the high seas for that fact. But it turns out, they found no trace of poison in his system at all. Well, what weapon was used then? Nothing has been found as of yet. The fact that there are no signs of a wound suggests it may have been a blunt object. Something that wouldn't leave a mark. Oh, I see. All the body's nerves run through the spine to the brain. A strong enough impact to the neck could induce death. Though it is kind of particular, like, I know there's some instances where people have broken their neck and survived, so, uh, it's not always a fatal situation, surprisingly. At least not in the movies. It's not like in the movies or in, you know, media where you just, like, you crack their neck and then just, like, they're dead. Like, I mean, you can die from it, but I think it has to be, like, a pretty severe, uh, break. Like, not just, like, a fracture or a, a slip disc or what have you. It is a possibility, and no obvious wound would be left. Poor Kazuma. Uh. What was that? I have a second copy of the report. 
If it might be useful, you're welcome to have it. Really? <laughs> Are you sure? And you're just doing us all kinds of solids. Yes, it's fine. I trust you. <sighs> ah. Man, you know, I didn't really like you that much at first because I thought you were like a corrupt dude. But actually, you're a cool guy. You got you, you got my respect, Inspector. <laughs> I should call you Respector Hasunaga. Gah! After all, if I didn't trust you, you'd already be dead. I'd never have agreed to you leaving this cabin in the first place, now would I? Ah, I mean, yeah, I suppose. Hmm. Okay, so we have his postmortem report. Cervical spine injury. No traces of external injury or poison. I mean, if it was a blunt weapon, I feel like it would leave like, even if it didn't like cause bleeding, it would still be like a bruise, wouldn't there? Like a, like a bonk, you know? Oh, well, I'm sure we'll find out more as the case goes along. The Great Detective, what do you have to say about that guy? Oh, Mr. Sholmes was here, was he? Yes, he seemed to be enjoying himself a little too much as he crept about on the floor investigating. <laughs> but then he suddenly left. I suppose he must have become bored. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, that, that, that does sound like him. Uh, did he say anything at all? Actually, now that you mention it, yes. Just one thing, but he practically shouted it. It's shoe polish, was all he said. Shoe polish? I wonder what he meant. It was when he was over there, by the piece of broken glass. Do you see? Oh yeah. Ah, perhaps he was talking about this brick-colored mark, do you think? Ah, yes, that must be it. But how could Mr. Sholmes know that it's shoe polish? Hmm. That leaves me cold, I'm afraid. I have no idea. What is it, Sadu-san? Well, Kazuma-sama was wearing leather shoes with a very dark tan hue. Dark tan? A sort of dark brownish red, then. I, I, I mean, I guess. Wait, what is a dark brownish red? Uh, hmm. Yes, a little like the color of red wine, but darker. I often repaired them for him. Repaired them for him. Oh, does this mean that this mark was made by the polish on Kazuma's shoes as they scuffed on the floor? The mark on the floor has been entered into the court record. Okay. Interesting, interesting. That's really all I can tell you at this stage. I should return to my post. My fellow crewman's eyes are boring into the back of my head. Yes, that might be for the best. For your sake, at least. Uh, thank you for the help. <coughs> Man, this dude has, like, multiple coughing sounds. Imagine me, like, I wonder how he got this role, like, the voice actor, you know, like... Where they just, like, cat, uh, have a whole, like, casting line of people just, like, recording their best, most realistic-sounding cough sounds. Because, like, he doesn't have any other lines. He just coughs. Poor Inspector. You look exhausted. Oh. No. Well, I mean... Yeah, a little. I feel terrible that I failed to protect Usagi-san. He was my responsibility, you know. Of course, my pain is nothing compared to yours. You were his friends. The truth is, I seem to have had a heavy head ever since I woke this morning. A heavy head? That's interesting. My head's still throbbing too. Oh yeah, you did bring that up at the beginning of the case and didn't really mention it ever, ever any, any more since then, so. I wasn't sure if that was going to be relevant or not. Okay, well. Guess we chatted with Hosunaga to the best of our ability. Well, let's let's re-examine this area, because there's apparently still more to, to, to do. So we 
it's clear that these letters were written with the ink that was somehow spilt on the floor. And they spell the Russian word for wardrobe. It does seem to be an unambiguous pointer to you, Naruhoto-san, as you were sleeping in there. But to be truly unambiguous, it should have just spelled out my name, don't you think? Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, yeah, if you were... Like, well, I mean, this series has done that before. Like, oh, the killer left a bloody message that, you know, spelled out the killer's name. Maybe Kazuma didn't want to be that fucking, uh, you know, unsubtle about it. Well, either way, one fact remains. You still don't look that good in this situation, Arhodo. It's hard to imagine that Kazuma-sama would have written his last words, or word, in Russian. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he didn't study Russian. Which begs the question of who did write it? Hmm. Curious indeed. Let's look at this shoe mark again. It really is such a beautiful color, this glass. It looks like whatever it was, it was has broken clean in two. But the other half is nowhere to be seen. And then there's a brick color colored mark. I don't, it just kind of looks like black to me, or like a, like a dark brown, really. But the shoe polish, according to that great detective you seem to know all about. I suppose it must be from Kazuma-sama's shoes. Maybe, but what I'd like to know is, how can the detective be so sure that it's shoe polish and not something else? Because he's a fucking great detective, asshole. What do you fucking think? It's hardly a reason, now is it? Hmm. Wait, knife. You know, I'm surprised that knife isn't, isn't important anyway. These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Biora. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. So by bringing her pet on board, Miss Pavlova has broken the rules. She called it her friend, didn't she? Yes, although we don't know what form this friend takes as yet. I'm almost certain that whatever it is, it's inside the traveling case in our cabin. I mean, yeah, we saw the thing move, like, multiple times. Hmm. A friend. There's more to this than it seems, I think. Hmm. Well, not still kind of taking what we can get, really, I suppose. Okay, let's examine this fella. Maybe he can talk to we can talk to him a bit. Uh, you! Where did you go? Oh, sorry, I, I just went to the next door cabin to bleh, bleh, bleh. Why? Who gave you permission for this? Um, well, in inspector I mean, uh mm, Seaman Hosanaga did. Hmm. That new Japanese, was it? Later, I will roll him to ball and throw him in cold room. Ooh, come on, don't 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 be mean like that. Woo! <laughs> He's gone back to guard the door. I hope Inspector Hosanaga doesn't find himself in too much trouble on our account. He's really gone out of his way to help us, hasn't he? When we get back to Japan, we'll have to take him for a stake at La Carnival. See? Ryanosuke gets it. We, we, we gotta repay our buddies. That could be a very long time now from, na from now, Narahodo-san. Oh. I guess he wasn't an important conversation piece. But is that it? I, there's nothing more, nothing, nothing left to do. I mean, I guess that wasn't useless, but well, now what? Oh, maybe let's check out the ability with the ventilator, the the, the, the vent again. Did uh, yeah? I wonder who vented in here. Am I right? Uh, so this ventilator joins Miss Pavlova's cabin. Yes, that's right. And, just a few minutes before he died, Kazuma saw something emerging from it. The speckled band, as he described it. If only Miss Pavlova had been able to shed some light on it. But she seemed as baffled as we are. Yes, I wonder if she's telling us everything, though. I'm not sure. 
I know that most people aboard would say the same about me, but there was something about that woman that didn't sit right with me. <laughs> Phoenix, right? Maybe. Hmm. Hey, nothing earth-shattering. Okay, I guess maybe we just leave. Maybe there's something new here. Okay, yeah, still a nice January, still the SS Bira and the cabin passageway. Ah! Look, Narahodo san! Seaman's stroke and F is gone! Strong enough? The burly Russian sailor who's always crossing his arms and glaring at us. Ugh, all these Russian names are impossible to remember. I mean, I'm sure some people would say that about your name, Ryanosuke. Uh, tra la la. Did you hear that? It sounded like someone's singing. Tra la la li ra li ra le I did it the great detective way. Oh, is that fucking Herlock? This caroling. I know that lock like voice. Well, never mind that now. This is a golden opportunity for us. Yes, you're right. You must seize it. Let's get inside Miss Paluva's cabin while we can and investigate. Definitely. Before that, um, that, that stringy knot, Kruman, Kruman comes back. It's Stroganoff, not stringy knot, you fucking buffoon. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, we can slide right up in there. Wait, you said I should investigate more in this area. Okay, I guess you're gonna let me know when other things. Uh, when I'm done. Anyway, let's, but this is, Pavlov is the most important, the, the important thing here. 9th of January, now we're back in Pavlova's cabin. Miss Pavlova isn't back yet. Oh yeah, she is still talking to the captain, the captain apparently. And yet, that traveling case is open. Sato-san. Oh, where's she gone? Hey, what are you doing? Those are her private things. It's not a moment to waste, Naruhodo san. Huh? We must investigate as quickly as we can. Yeah, let's fucking snoop in her underwear drawer. Like, what the fuck do you think that, what is that gonna accomplish? I suppose you're right, for Cosmos' sake. Not just for Cosmos, sama What do you mean, pal? It can't be long now until we arrive at port. In Hong Kong. I don't want you to be in those handcuffs when we get there. Yeah, that's probably not gonna be good for you, me. Really? We must solve this case, Naruto san. By ourselves if we have to. Yes, we w we will, totally. I mean, you, I appreciate your resolve, if nothing else. <laughs> you definitely, despite being kind of, uh, refined. You're also strong-willed, which is pretty cool. But, uh, you know, I think we can save the proper investigation for next episode. You know, things, it's getting a little long, it's getting a little bit long, so, yeah. And besides, I don't want to get started investigating stuff and then have to properly and then have to cut it off, you know, so. Next time, though, we'll definitely go into it. Into her, uh, secret drawers and see what kind of uh, clandest clandestine things she's got up, 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 all up in her business. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, until next time.